All right, guys, so unless you've been living on a rock or you don't drive a car, right, a car that consumes gas, uh, you should have noticed that gas prices are skyrocketing. In fact, um, they're above $4 a gallon now on average, and uh, they're the highest they've been since 2008. Now, everybody remembers 2008, right? The gas price in 2008, okay, uh, that was a terrible time, right? It was a terrible, terrible, terrible time, okay? Now, uh, this is pretty, pretty bad because uh, we're already experiencing record inflation, okay? And now, uh, increased energy prices on top of that in the wake of the Ukraine-Russia crisis really is putting the Biden administration in a bad, bad, bad position, right? He really doesn't have many good options for how to basically uh, relieve some of the pain that the American people are facing. And one of the reasons why is because uh, he's woke on climate. Right. And because he's woke on climate, he's basically neutered and castrated uh, the U.S.'s uh, domestic energy production. Right. Particularly, again, oil and gas and coal, which is why we can't sanction Russia and the energy sector when it comes to basically stop buying Russian oil uh, because we don't produce enough of our own oil to make up for it. OK, which, again, has presented a very, very, very interesting problem for Joe Biden because he can't just come out here and say, hey, you know, we're going to increase uh, drilling here uh, domestically and we're going to produce more oil and gas because that goes against their climate policies. Right. But at the same time, he can't just sit here and continue to buy Russian oil and fund uh, their war in Ukraine. OK, so this guy is kind of stuck between a rock and hard place. And I want you guys to watch uh, Jen Psaki here try to. Uh, do the Biden administration's balancing act in the face of questions from the mainstream liberal media about why in the world is Joe Biden not doing more to increase domestic gas production? Take a look. You, you just said that, you know, less supply raises prices. It's not in our strategic interest to reduce the supply. Yeah. We also know, you know, the president as recently as yesterday talked about increasing domestic manufacturing to bring down prices on uh, inflated items like goods. So why not apply the same logic to energy and increase domestic production here? Well, there are 9,000 approved oil leases that the oil companies are not tapping into currently. So I would ask them that question. Is there nothing that the administration can do to get those providers back to pre-pandemic levels? Do you think the oil companies don't have enough money to drill on the places that have been pre-approved? Just asking. I would, I would point that question to them and we can talk about it more tomorrow when you learn more. Do you think that opening the Keystone pipeline and having more energy friendly policies might do that? The Keystone pipeline has never been operational. It would take years for that to have any impact. I know a number of members of Congress have suggested that, but that is a proposed solution that has no relationship or would have no impact on what the problem is. We hear all agree is an issue. So during that, those years where it would you know, take to bring down prices, as you're saying, we should just continue to buy Russian oil? Well, again, Jackie, I think you're familiar with a number of steps we've taken, a historic release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Well, we can, well, let me finish. What we can do over time, and what this is all a reminder of in the President's view, is our need to reduce our reliance on oil. The Europeans need to do that. We need to do that. If we do more to invest in clean energy, more to invest in other sources of, in of energy, that's exactly what we can do to prevent this uh, from happening in the future. We welcome any Republicans from joining us in that effort. As Go long, ahead. As long as we're buying Russian oil, though, aren't we financing the war? Well, Jackie, again, uh, it's only about 10 percent of what we're importing. Uh, I've not made any announcement about any decision on that front, but our objective here and our focus is making sure that any step we take maximizes the impact on President Putin and minimizes it on the American people. And anyone who's calling for uh, an end to the carve-out uh, should be clear that that would rise, raise prices. All right, so Jen Psaki, basically what she's doing there, she's actually playing on people's ignorance, okay? Because the new line from the Biden administration when confronted about uh, drilling in the U.S., right, and why we just don't increase our own domestic uh, production and drill more, is that, well, hey, you know what? Hey, we got 9,000 approved oil leases uh, for land that these oil companies are free to drill on, right? They can just walk in there and just start drilling on the land, right? That's the way she frames it. They're trying to blame the oil companies as if the oil companies are just, they just don't want to drill, okay? And, and that's just what it is, okay? Instead of telling the whole story about why the oil companies don't want to drill, 
Okay, and it's very simple. They're not incentivized to actually drill due to the Biden administration's policies. And I actually want you guys to watch this epic fact check from KATV in which they destroy Jen Psaki and the Democrats' pathetic excuse for why we are not drilling more domestically. Take a look. Well, there are bipartisan calls continuing tonight for the U.S. to stop importing Russian oil and to curb current policies. Our fact check team getting to the truth of the matter when it comes to the country's energy sector. The Biden administration points to the 9,000 unused gas and oil leases as a major reason why we cannot increase our nation's energy production. Our investigative producers tonight spending hours digging into those permits and our country's current oil supply. Connor, we first start with you on this. The big question here is, why are so many leases out there not being used right now? That's a great question, Ryan, and there's a few answers to that question. Mm -hmm. We've heard from members of the Biden administration that people are free to start simply using these 9,000 leases if they would like to. However, that statement can be misleading. Mm -hmm. According to a Department of Interior report, the U.S. had over 37,000 oil and gas leases just last year. So 9,000 is a small number comparatively. And just because an oil company has a lease, this doesn't mean they get to walk on in and start drilling right away. They must satisfy a ton of regulatory requirements, such as an on-site inspection, environmental review, and permit approval. This process can take up to 10 years. So just because there are technically 9,000 unused leases, this doesn't mean the land is ready to be drilled on. Right. And we're seeing crude oil as high as $115 per barrel. And on average, you'll pay about $3.84 for a regular gallon of gas. This means profits for oil and gas producers. And we dug into Exxon and Chevron stock numbers. Exxon stock coming in at $84. That's up nearly $25 over the past year. Chevron is up too, coming in at just under $159. Now, American oil suppliers aren't eager to ramp up supply. There is a labor and equipment shortage, which slows down production. Companies are also cautious about investing too much because of the COVID-19 pandemic's oil bust. When folks were stuck in Side, the oil market saw negative pricing and investors are hesitant to put more money in fossil fuel stocks, in some cases blaming the administration's policies. Now experts say even if these companies start drilling more oil wells today, it could take anywhere from months to years for that oil to start flowing. Interesting notes there, Janae and Connor. Thank you. Much more to come. Yeah, so basically in a nutshell, uh, the reason why there's not more drilling is because of red tape, right? Red tape, the pandemic, right? The uh, fear mongering that Democrats done in regards to pushing for shutdowns, pushing for people not to live their normal lives, not to go on vacation, not to actually drive, right? Not to consume gas, okay? That creates a low demand, okay? And with low demand, guess what? Uh, supplies gonna be cut back, right? And with the global supply chain crisis, they also have an equipment problems, labor shortages. So, I mean, there's a whole lot going on there. OK, but I think overall, the takeaway is that this administration's policies in regards to the red tape uh, that is needed to actually drill. OK, uh, is basically a deterrent from these oil companies wanting to really do anything. OK, and uh, even if Biden removed the red tape, then there will be the issue of having to deal with the uh, climate activists. Right. Who are saying, that, no, 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 you got to have this red tape so that you disincentivize uh, drilling. OK, because, hey, the climate is important, according to them. OK, so uh, with that being said, Joe Biden's in a pickle here because realistically, uh, he's not really going to be able to increase uh, domestic oil production anytime soon. Right. Not enough to actually do anything while he's still in office. So that means he's going to have to pay our old friends uh, OPEC. Right. Uh, which includes the Saudis a visit. And the Saudis aren't necessarily going to be too happy to see Joe Biden uh, coming to them, begging for them to produce more oil. Take a look. Uh, what we're now look, we're looking ahead to is we're waiting for remarks from the U.S. President uh, Joe Biden. One of the measures he might announce is the release of a, a strategic reserve of oil and gas. And the United States is a producer of crude. Uh, but uh, will he then be, in your view, on the telephone uh, to the king or the crown prince to uh, uh, talk a little bit about whether or not uh, they too can uh, help out by pumping out more oil. Yeah, I think we have to put things into context. Last year, President Biden blamed the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the fossil fuel at the climate summit. 
and subsequently, François, one week later, he asked Riyadh to increase its oil production to lower the prices of oil. And it was a way to throw the blame on Saudi so he can cover up his primary responsibility for all his mistips after he knocked down the U.S. shale oil industry. So, so are, you up, Saudi, that, uh, are you saying that uh, the crown prince won't pick up the phone? It's not about picking up the phone. The U.S. will always remain as the most strategic ally, not only partner, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, the current administration has made a lot of mistakes uh, against the custodian of the two holy mosques, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the center of Islam, by calling it a pariah. So you call Saudi Arabia a pariah the moment you don't think you need it, and the moment you need Saudi Arabia, you call it a partner? Saudi Arabia doesn't like to play these games. So I think the United States, the, the, the ball is in the court of the United States to rectify the trajectory. Yeah, so the Saudis ain't really feeling Biden like that. They ain't really feeling Biden like that, right? And I think it's evident not just by what that guy said, but also the fact that Biden's low-key been kind of nudging them to, hey, can you guys produce more oil? Please, gas prices are high over here. Could you please produce more oil? And the Saudis are like, yeah, 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 yeah we'll do that. But they're not actually doing it, right? They're actually sticking with a gradual output, right? Where they're, they're increasing it slowly over time. They're not ramping it up significantly, okay? So uh, Biden <laughs> really finds himself, again, in a, stuck between a rock and a hard place here because he spent time bashing Saudi Arabia and called him a pariah when it came to climate stuff, okay? And as you guys should be able to pick up here, uh, one of the root causes of what is going on in Russia and Ukraine is this shift towards renewable energy, right? Germany don't really want to participate in the whole Ukraine crisis. They like, eh, we kind of going to be on the fence. We ain't really going to do too much because, you know, we get our natural gas from Russia, right? And natural gas is a transition energy source. They're trying to get off of oil and gas, right, and transition to renewables, and they're using natural gas as a way to transition. And that made them dependent on Russia, the same way that we're basically dependent on Russia for uh, energy, okay, because of our woke climate policies in which we don't want to really produce our own stuff anymore because we can say, hey, look at us lowering our emissions, guys. We're switching to renewables. But the unfortunate reality is that renewables are just not there yet, okay? So I, I think what the Biden administration is doing here, I, I, I think this is what they're going to do. I think they're going to try to get OPEC uh, to pump out more oil, right, to try to lower some prices. But I don't think that they're actually going to do anything about uh, Russia in regards to stop buying their oil, right? And, and the reason why is because it, it's just going to make gas prices rise exponentially, okay? And th the Democrats are just not going to be able to stomach it, okay? I mean, there's, there's a literally no-win situation here for Biden. We can't increase domestic drilling fast enough to actually offset the situation right now. The only people who can actually probably ease the pain right and probably give us the ability to actually do something here is opec right is opec the cartels right now russia's a part of opec plus okay but i'm just saying like the, the core of opec the saudis and the arabs right they're the ones that can actually really 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 put us in a position where we may be able to actually sanction russia in that energy because uh the saudis are making up for it on the back end but it remains to be seen whether or not that'll actually happen because they don't really like Biden like that. They ain't really feeling Biden like that. And, um, you know, unlike Trump, Trump was cool with the Saudis. He was like, hey, we cool with y'all. You know, y'all keep pumping out that oil, keep the prices low, we cool with y'all. You know what I'm saying? Biden, on the other hand, being woke on climate, not the same thing. Okay, so again, uh, energy dependence has put us in a situation where we can't really do anything to Russia because we're dependent on them, which basically is giving Putin... Uh, more power and resources to wage this assault against Ukraine. And we're just helpless to really hit them where it hurts because of that. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.